Hello and welcome to an episode of Advanced GIS. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at GIS workflows and how to use Python programming and model builder to create reproducible workflows in ArcGIS Pro. Okay, where we left off last time, we started with our model builder to create the workflow process of taking a DEM and an outlook coordinate table and going through the watershed delineation process. Then we exported this as a Python script, which we then copied and pasted into a special works project notebook, where we went through and updated some of the lines for setting our workspace, defining our parameters, and then going through the actual process of running the geo processes for delineation. So next up is actually taking this from Arc Pro and getting it into the cloud. So you can take this with you anywhere. So the benefit of running this on ArcGIS Online is that you don't need to have ArcGIS Pro installed. You don't even have to have a Windows computer. You just need to have a browser that can log into ArcGIS Online, and then you have access to the notebook environment, and you can run any of the geoprocessing tools that we've run here. So let's take a look at how we can do that. I've cleaned up my workspace a little bit. I created a folder called notebooks where I have my WShed tool IPYNB, which we created last time. I also have my WShed GDB, which has my Napa DEM and my Outlet Geo TXT. But notice that it also includes the WShed, the Outlet Geo, and the Outlet NAD, which were created as intermediate layers with our tool. So what I wanna do is first create a copy of this GDB. So I'm gonna come in here and just create copy. And then in this folder, which is my advanced GIS folder, I'm gonna come in here and paste. So it's now called WShed underscore one. I'm going to come in here. And what I wanna do is just get rid of the intermediate layers. So the Napa WShed, I'm gonna come up here and delete it. Outlet Geo, I'm going to delete that. And the Outlet NAD, I'm going to delete that. So now I have a copy of my file geo database with the two input layers that I want for running my analysis. So you could imagine creating a file geo database, putting in the layers of the inputs that you want. You could also have downloaded this from the internet or we could actually create our own file geo database in ArcGIS Online and import layers that we want from there. For those purposes, I'm just gonna have these as a copy of the one that I already created. All right, so now I have a file geo database I need to get online and I have my notebook that I need to get online. So let's go through those steps. All right, so here I am in my workspace folder. And in my workspace folder, here is that WShed1 GDB. So what I wanna do in order to get a file geo database onto ArcGIS Online, the first thing you need to do is compress it. So you have the option, if you don't have 7-zip installed, you can use send to compressed zip folder. So Windows has this default option for you or you can use 7-zip if you have it installed. So I'll go ahead and use the default Windows compressed zip folder. Hit enter. And we see that I now have wshed1.gdb.zip. So that's the first step. The next step is getting into ArcGIS Online. So here we are in ArcGIS Online. If you come up to your content and come to a folder, you 
and go to add item, item from your computer, choose an item, find your IPYNB for your watershed tool or whatever you called it, click open, give it a tag. So this is a notebook. This is a special works project and click add item. You see that it gets added as an item. When you click to open the item, you'll notice that you should have options for open notebook. You can re-download it or you can share it. For our purposes, let's go ahead and click on open to take a look at our WShed tool notebook in ArcGIS Online. And you should notice that the notebook looks just like the notebook we had over here in ArcGIS Pro. The ArcGIS notebook environment, we wanna make sure that we're running the advanced version. So we're gonna come over here to ArcPy and I'm gonna to try to import it. So I'm gonna run this cell. If it didn't load, that means you're not in the advanced method of ArcGIS notebooks. And in order to change the kernel that you're in, you should be able to come over here to settings and the notebook runtime by default, you can change it to the advanced Python 4, which apparently here is the default. All right, and we can also run the second cell to make sure that we have access to the spatial analyst tools and we get the checked out just like we did before. So now we get down to cell where we're setting the file geo database and notice that we had given it a C drive, which means that, that was on our Windows machine. Know that ArcGIS Online is cloud-based, which means it's running on somebody else's computer somewhere else in the world. So how do we get access to our file geo database in this environment. Up here in the gray toolbar, you'll see the one called files. If you click that, it opens up your files view and you'll see that you have options in the slash ArcGIS folder, which is your little slice of ArcGIS online, a home and a samples data folder. Home is your folder, which means that it's yours and you can save any kind of data that you want here. I have saved a number of things in mine. And we see that I do have a folder called special works already where I have a special works six GDB. What I'd like to do is get my GDB from my computer, which is wshed1.gdb here in ArcGIS online. So what you can do is come down here to choose file. And I'm going to come over and find my zipped version of wshed1 gdb.zip and click open. And once you click open, you'll see that it's queued and then you'll have the option to click the upload, click the upload button. And you'll see that I now have wshed1.gdb.zip. And I have an option to add to my notebook. This is a file but it's actually a file geodatabase that's been zipped. So what I need to do is extract this so that I get access to the .gdb. So over in notebooks, I'm gonna add a new markdown cell. And let's go ahead and make a note that we want to unzip So how we have already uploaded it, now we just need to unzip it. The methods for doing this are highlighted in the file geo database notebook that I shared with you. There is a section on how to create a zipped version using the zip file Python function. So we are going to use zip file again. So over here, up here with ArcPy, I'm going to add import 
zip file, and I might also need OS. All right, so with OS and zip file, I'm going to make sure that first I can find my wshed1 gdb.zip. OS.get current working directory will tell me what directory I'm currently in. And we see that our directory that we're currently in is slash ArcGIS, which is the root directory up here in the top left-hand corner. So notice that I'm in slash home slash special works. So my directory is going to be slash ArcGIS slash home slash special works. And that is the directory that my GDB is in. If you want to create a folder, remember you can always come over here. To the files and folders notebook to see how to create folders and notebooks. And my GDB is called wshed1.gdb.zip. So I can call this my GDB path. My GDB name, my GDB path is just os.path.join my directory and my GDB name. GDB path. All right, so we set the directory, we define the name of the file, and then we just join the two together to see does that point slash ArcGIS slash home slash special works split slash wshed one GDB that zip. That looks exactly right. We can make sure that the computer believes that that is right by saying os.path.is file. Remember a zip is a file and it says true. All right, so now that we have the path to our file defined, what we can do is unzip the file so that we get our GDB located here. And that comes from zip file. The first step of zip file is to create a zip file dot zip file object. As we saw over here in creating all right, so from zip file, import zip file. I'm going to fix this so that it imports the zip file. Rerun. Down here, I don't have to do this anymore. And zip file needs to point to an actual file that is a zip, which is called my GDB path. So this is open my zip file. And like any kind of file handle, we have the option of sending it a, do you wanna open it for reading, writing or appending? And the zip file, what we wanna do is open it for reading. So this creates a link that opens up the zip file for reading. So I'll run this. And now I have an object that points to my zip file. If I take a look at what's inside the object, which is Z, which is a zip file object, we can see that it has, if we scroll past all the ones that start with an underscore, a close comment, compression, debug, extract, and extract all sounds nice. File list and file name, that could be useful. Read, start, test, write, some stuff like that. All right. Let's see what file list gives us on our Z. Oh, it is not callable. 
And we see that file list shows us all of the files that were in our file geo database. Let's take a look at what extract all does. Extract all says extracts all members from the archive to the current working directory. Path specifies a different directory. So here we have extract all path members password. It's not password protected. So here I can just say z dot extract all. Path equals none means it's going to save it here. I can say path equals here. And the dot is a special character that means the current directory that we're in. Uh, you might want to set it so that the path goes to my directory. So my directory, which means that it's going to extract it to the special works folder. All right, so if we run this, we should see our file geo database extracted. Come over here to special works. And we see that we now have a copy of our GDB extracted. And then in good working order, whenever you're done with a file handle, you always close the handle when you're done. Okay, so now it's set the folder and file geo database path for this and for this online environment. So my GDB right now is located in this folder. So I'm going to take away this and say os.path.join my directory. And now it's not my GDB name because this was the zipped name. It's this name. Make sure you put names in quotes. And we can double check that it exists. Print os.path.isdir. Notice that a GDB registers as a directory, not as a file. And if everything works, we should be able to set our environment manager to our file geo database. Okay, and we'll take a look. Interestingly enough, that doesn't seem to want to print. So here, my workspace, I'm going to set this equal to my GDB ArcPyENV workspace. Okay, so it looks like this doesn't work here. We'll set it manually there, and we'll try rerunning this. Take a look at the output coordinate system, and it's working. All right, so then we had to add this So we have to manually store our workspace here. Okay. Now, can we run the rest of our process? Run the fill. Let's take a look. There it is. Run the flow direction. Take a look. There it is. Set our CRS for our point location. And process the XY table to point. 
and we get a success message back. And then we project. And we get a success message back. So we move on with the flow accumulation. Take a look. There we have it. Let's go ahead and check our snapper point. Do we see it? It's still too small for the eye to see. Let's run the watershed tool. And let's visualize it. And there we see our watershed tool or the, the output watershed. Notice that we did save it. So how do we actually take a look at files inside our file geo database? Okay. List feature classes in our FGDB. And we see we have outlet geo and outlet NAD. And then ArcPy should have a list All right, so in list data sets, we have wildcard and feature type. And feature type can look at rasters. So let's take a look at no wildcard and the feature type is raster. And interestingly enough, it's showing us the input Napa DEM. It's showing us the intermediate fill flow, direction flow accumulation and snapper, which we didn't actually save, but they're, they're showing up anyways. And then Napa W shed, which is the output layer that we saved. So there we have it. We've run our Napa watershed delineation workflow process in ArcGIS Online. So we did not have to use Arc Pro at all. We just had to make sure that we got our file geo database into the folder. And we had to make sure that we set up, we had to extract the zip file. Then we had to make sure that we set the workspace using the ArcPy ENV workspace keyword so that it is running from our file geo database. And once we have all of this set up, it's the same process as before running the geoprocessing tools. So we can come up here and save. We get the green checkbox. And now with WShed tool saved, we should be able to come back to our content Take a look at our WShed tool. And this is our ArcGIS notebook for watershed delineation updated for AGOL. And you can always click on preview so that you can go through and look at the process and see anything that's been rendered so that it's easy access without having to actually 
turn on or open the file geo or open the notebook. And you can always go in and edit it, download it, share it, what have you. Okay, so this has been a tutorial going through the steps for watershed delineation, taking those steps and applying them into a graphical model, turning a graphical model into a geoprocessing tool by assigning parameters, taking the graphical model, geoprocessing tool, saving it as a Python script, then converting the Python script into an ArcGIS notebook, and then taking the ArcGIS notebook and uploading it to ArcGIS online. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.